in front of the camera is the updated 2025 Ram 1500. And I'm very lucky to have two engineers, not just one, two engineers in front of that truck. On the right, we have Doug Killian. And Doug, you are the? I am the Chief Vehicle Synthesis Manager for Trucks at Stellantis. That's an engineering title if I've ever yes, heard it one. Yes, no acronyms. And then on the left is Alan Fokowski, and he is? I was the chief engineer for the Hurricane engine. There you go. Um, two great engineering titles. And I'd like to speak with both of you, but Alan, I do want to start with you because a huge part of this update is new engines in the Ram. We are now for a 2025 model year at least, six cylinders only. We start with a Pentastar V6, and then we have two inline six options, both of them twin turbocharged, both of them called Hurricane. One of them adds a high output at the end. What were the motivations to switch from the several different engine options, including a 5.7 V8, to six cylinders only? Sure. So the migration from the 5.7 to the six cylinder was driven because we wanted to be able to provide our customers more more power, more torque, more acceleration, and most importantly, more fuel efficiency. So we've migrated from a naturally aspirated V8 engine to a turbocharged, twin turbocharged, inline six cylinder engine that's able to accomplish all those objectives. You switch to an inline six instead of a V6, because we've seen other V6 engines in Ford, in Toyota, and of course, We've got a four cylinder even in the Chevrolet, but why the inline six? Sure. There's an architectural advantage of an inline six cylinder engine. It's perfectly balanced. There's no vibration from the pistons going up and down. And one of the objectives we wanted for the truck was to improve the refinement, the NVH, and the overall impression that the customers get when they're in the vehicle. Because there's no vibration from the engine, whether it's at idle or all the way up to red line, they're going to experience that. And that's what the inline six cylinder architecture provides us. Now, this is an inherently torquey engine, right? We've got more stroke than we have bore. So we have that lever arm working for us on the crankshaft. Was that intentional because it was truck based or is that coincidental because this engine does exist in the Grand Wagoneer as well? Yeah, I would say the bore and stroke ratio um, and the torque that you're referring to is uh, somewhat coincidental. We selected it so that we could suppress knock in the engine. Mm. Whenever you have a turbocharged engine, you need to be able to manage the knock in order to get the power and the torque out of the engine. And an under square engine has a shorter time for the flame to complete the combustion process. And so really it's a race against knock. Can you complete the combustion process before knock occurs? And that was really what was behind the selection of a smaller bore and a longer stroke. So that's interesting. You're talking about the, um, the expansion in the combustion chamber. It's a smaller expansion because it's a smaller cylinder because the bore is smaller. That's right. It's got to go a shorter distance. Yeah. The flame, it's really a flame front and it propagates across the bore. Okay. People think that's an explosion. It's not. It's like you put a match into the combustion chamber and the gas burns. And what you're trying to do is complete that combustion event before knock can occur, which is premature ignition on its own. So you it's a race. You're trying I see. to get the flame front across and to complete the combustion process before knock can occur. That's interesting. Um, and you guys have twin turbochargers in this, but these are uh, each turbocharger is fed by three of the cylinders, and then these are monoscroll turbochargers that feed in just one big waft of air into the intake manifold. Is that correct? That's true, but the point that you made about three cylinders feeding each turbo yeah. is a key characteristic because the turbo's job is to extract energy. And on a four stroke engine. Extract from the exhaust. From the exhaust yes. energy. And on a four stroke engine, when you combine three cylinders, you get perfect combustion events are separated and we can extract the maximum amount of energy from those. As you start to put more and more cylinders on that turbocharger, you get overlap. And so the peak to trough ratio is reduced. So we selected the architecture that's optimized, which is three cylinders on each turbo 
We've got two turbos, splitting the work between them allows them to be smaller, have less inertia, spool up quickly and eliminate turbo lag. Yeah, and you're also running 350 bar, over 5,000 PSI fuel injectors. So lots of uh, fuel pressure to really get the fuel into the combustion chamber quickly. It's direct injection, yeah? It's direct injection. And you bring up a good point about the high pressures. They're important for a couple of reasons. I'll go back to the knock, right? We need to be able to inject the fuel very late during the compression stroke, and that also helps to suppress knock. The high pressures also allow the fuel spray to be finely atomized, which reduces the emissions from the engine, and it also increases the efficiency of the engine. Okay, interesting. Now, um, Doug, I mentioned that we're six cylinders only, but the one thing that surprised me a little bit, and this is still powertrain related, but I think you could answer this in a nice broad level. Sure. The Pentastar is actually the only hybrid version of this engine right now. It has a, an e-torque 48 volt system that's part of it. And that's not on the new inline six cylinders. And that, that surprised me a little bit. Why is the Pentastar the only hybrid amongst these new trucks? Well, as Alan mentioned, the efficiency we were able to capture with the base engine itself. So when we think about that mild hybrid system, the e-torque system, that does bring in a level of efficiency because we're able to recover some of that energy. Uh, during the braking events, we can get that regenerative braking going. In the case of the twin turbo Hurricane, the efficiency is there inherently. And in effect, we do have stop start on the, uh, on the Hurricane, which is good for simply just not consuming fuel at idle. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So at this, at this point, that really was the right blend for the, for the 3.6 liter. For the SST, the twin turbo, it's it's got the efficiency inherently. Yeah. Now this truck update isn't just engine, of course. Um, there is another engine to talk about. We will get back to that, Alan. I did not forget about it, but um, I'm curious if you could speak to um, the other updates to the 25 model year Ram that uh, go with the new engines. Of course. Yeah. Uh, in terms of just refinement of the chassis, so we look at what the Ram has always done well over the years: the link coil, rear suspension, air suspension two very key parts of what we do well. We continue to evolve those. Uh, bushing tuning, shock absorber tuning, spring rate tweaking. Those are all things that, that continue to evolve. But really what makes a difference this time is the electrical architecture that we've put behind it, what we call Atlantis High. The, the nerve center, if you will, that's controlling all the communications, the connection of the modules between um, the, the electrical features, um, some of just the base electrical body communications that are happening across the network. So that's faster now with Atlantis High. We're able to update more modules over the air. So if we have an a improvement that's coming along, we can update that in the background. And the, the driver will only see those, those improvements as we develop it. And when you say modules, you're effectively talking about computers. You're talking about like the engine's computer, That's the right. transmission's computer, the the uh, just the um, slip controls, like so anti-lock brakes, traction exactly. control, that kind of thing. Exactly. That's what I'm saying in terms of uh, a module is basically a computer, a processor. So this Atlantis High, you call it? Correct. That is kind of a central computer to manage the other computers and, and give it one like clean line of communication? Yeah, essentially that's, that's, that's arbitrating the communications across these modules between each, uh, between each computer or each module. Okay, and the one thing you're talking about, spring rates and suspension, but a key part, I'll, you know, this is an air suspension. So right. that is, to a certain extent, adjustable, the spring rate. And I'm curious if you guys, because I know you can adjust the ride height on these trucks. That's right. Do you, do you have adaptability to the spring rate to go with different drive modes or um, uh, circumstances on the road? Yeah, for sure. Uh, you, you mentioned drive modes. That's something that will, in addition to the, uh, the all-wheel drive system, will also adjust the air spring on a air suspension equipped vehicle. Now that change in rate actually is a function of the height of the spring. So there's something called a piston within the air spring itself. Mm -hmm. And that location of the air spring within the piston sets the rate at which it operates. So we do what we call tuning of the profile of that piston to affect that rate. Higher rate usually means more stiffness. More stiffness is better for handling and performance. A little bit of a trade-off to ride comfort. That's where we then enable that, that height setting during sport mode, uh, the drive mode sport. Okay, but you know, that also, 
I'm sure plays a role in like load leveling for the rear with the trailer and things like that as yes. well. Yeah. So if we, if, for example, if you're set into the sport drive mode, it will level to a lower level to the, which is effectively our arrow setting, which okay. is about 15 millimeters lower than the normal ride height. Which is six tenths of an inch roughly. More or less. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And conversely in off-road setting, we will raise to a higher level okay. for more ground clearance and a different ride rate characteristic at that higher level. Now it's not new for 25 that we have air springs, but just like the rest of the systems, you did continuously play with this stuff a little bit. Exactly. Exactly. And we did just, we did refinement as we brought the new engine and that actually affects the, the ride performance and the balance of the vehicle. So that does require that we tune the vehicle suspension around that mass, the engine itself. Thank you so much for that segue, because indeed, uh, you, you told me earlier, there, there is, it's not a huge difference, but there is a subtle weight difference in the front end of these Ram trucks with the different engines. Very subtle, and the placement of the engine within the truck ah, itself. Ah, so weight balance. Exactly, so yeah, it's about the center yeah, yeah. of gravity, not just the mass itself, but as that inline six is a, a different geometry than a V8, there's a different, uh, different center of gravity characteristic. So we have the Pentastar V6, which is a mild hybrid setup. We have the Hurricane straight six turbo engine, which is not a mild hybrid because it is more inherently inefficient. But then we have the Hurricane HO or Hurricane High Output. And that is gonna be standard equipment on your high level Rams for 2025. Um, the brand new trim, the tungsten, also the limited and one other. With the high output engine, you're getting a 120 horsepower gain, but torque is actually only goes up by 51. And when I first heard those numbers, Alan, I was thinking, okay, we're getting a lot of our power differences at the higher revs. As the engine really starts spinning, it really starts growing its muscle and that's how the horsepower can really, really fly. That's correct. So we spin the high output engine to a higher engine speed. Okay, so it does have a higher red line. It has a higher red line. And we also have larger turbochargers on the high output version of the engine in order to flow more mass of air and essentially fuel as well. And that's how we're able to make the additional horsepower. And is it the same injectors? Can the same injectors higher, handle the higher amounts of fuel that needed to make the more power? They're the same injectors, but we did have to add a second fuel pump on the high output version ah. of the engine because of just as we have more airflow from the turbos, we need more fuel flow from the fuel system. Interesting. So there's a second pump to help manage the additional flow that's required. Also, I, I did I did notice Doug was particularly proud of this, and I respect him for that, that uh, the high output uh, Hurricane specifically is true dual exhaust. You have two exhaust pipes coming right from the headers. They never connect. So you have more exhaust flow as well, lower back pressure. Yeah, so we need to have a, a less restrictive exhaust system because we're flowing more air through it. Just as we put bigger turbos to jam more air into the engine, we have to have larger exhaust pipes and more of them to get the air out of the engine in order to achieve the 540 horsepower that the high output engine produces. Yeah, and 521 pound-feet of torque. Certainly no joke for torque, um, but compared to 468 of the standard Hurricane, it's less of a difference, um, you know, versus 420 horsepower to 540 horsepower. But it's super cool. And it, it does seem like regardless of which engine you choose, you're gonna get the same, effectively, the same torque flight, eight-speed transmission. Is that correct? That's correct. Yep. yep. And then um, the full-time four-wheel drive. So it's rear-wheel drive. There is a rear-wheel drive only version of this Ram, but then the full-time four-wheel drive system, that effectively stays the same ac across the engine lineup as well, yeah? True, yes, yeah. we do have the automatic TK, so four-wheel drive auto, four-wheel drive high, which locks the TK's front to rear yep, yeah. in a low range. And then also, also new for the 2025 model year, less you guys specifically, but we have the new Uconnect 5 inner uh, center console touchscreen, and then you can go up to a 12.3 inch fully digital instrument cluster and a 10.3 inch passenger side uh, screen as well to do all kinds of fun things because screens must be bigger always. And, um, you know, it's, it's, but it is a faster software that uh, is underlying that you connect five system. So this is not a full generational change of the uh, 2025 Ram, but it's a mid cycle update that is pretty darn significant only six cylinder power, but pretty darn healthy as you heard. 
six cylinder power. And Alan, Doug, thank you so much for those incredible detailed insights. I really appreciate it. Anytime, thank you, Robin. Robin. I appreciate it.